In recent years, NASA seems to have lost the ability to carry out ambitious lunar exploration efforts with their most expensive machine, the Space Launch System, SLS, and Orion spacecraft. This has compelled them to explore additional options, including SpaceX's colossal spacecraft Starship. However, while Starship is still in the testing phase and not yet ready for immediate mission deployment, is there another way for the United States to return to the moon properly? Well, an excellent proposal that has long captured the attention of the space community is resurfacing, SpaceX's Crew Dragon. So, how would Crew Dragon land on the moon? Why isn't NASA utilizing this vehicle to expedite a lunar mission? Let's find out the real reason for this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. At the forefront of NASA's current lunar mission strategy lies a tandem of deployment of the Orion spacecraft and the SLS, envisioned as the stalwart vehicles to propel astronauts towards the moon's celestial expanse. However, the implementation of this lunar mission plan has encountered formidable obstacles. The SLS has found itself ensnared in a protracted web of development delays and budgetary challenges. The first launch of SLS was initially planned for 2016, but it was delayed by six years before it could be realized, and only one launch to date. This indicates that technical issues with a rocket hardware can be quite time-consuming. Of course, along with it comes the loss of finances. From its inception in 2011 through the year of its first flight, the Space Launch System rocket program has cost $23.8 billion. The Orion Deep Space capsule has cost $20.4 billion since the program began in 2006. Related ground infrastructure upgrades cost an additional $5.7 billion since 2012. In total, NASA spent $49.9 billion on these programs between 2006 and their first test launch in 2022, exceeding the initial estimates by more than 42.5%. Considering these achievements, we don't have much confidence in the capability of SLS and Orion to carry out a crewed lunar orbit mission by 2025 let alone a lunar landing by 2026. It may significantly lag behind NASA's recently established schedule. Now, a viable alternative has emerged. The contract leading to the development of the Dragon crewed spacecraft was initiated by NASA in 2014. In the span of six years and with an investment of $3 billion, SpaceX successfully launched astronauts into orbit. The significance of this achievement extends beyond space exploration. It showcases that a well-led entrepreneurial team can achieve feats that were once deemed possible only for superpowers. What SpaceX demonstrated, particularly with its reusable Falcon launch vehicles, goes beyond efficiency. It challenges notions of the impossible. This marks nothing short of a revolution in the approach to space exploration, introducing a paradigm shift in both time and cost considerations. We acknowledge the dedicated efforts of NASA and its contractors in the development of the Orion SLS system. However, it is evident that these endeavors have been surpassed by the agility of more nimble commercial companies. The Dragon spacecraft, crafted by SpaceX, not only boasts a lower cost than Orion, but also outperforms it significantly due to its substantially lighter mass, with Dragon weighing in at 9.5 tons compared to Orion's 26.5 tons. One reason Orion has grown so large and expensive is that its destinations and requirements keep changing. The vehicle has, at various times, been intended for use as a space station taxi, a spacecraft to fly astronauts to distant asteroids, and more before its current role as a means of getting astronauts to and from high lunar orbit. This has necessitated costly design changes. NASA has also placed some stringent requirements on Orion that have been borne by no previous spacecraft. For example, in case of a depressurization event, there is a requirement that Orion keeps its crew members alive for seven days in their spacesuits. This adds mass and complexity to a system for what seems like a rare circumstance. Furthermore, the SLS faces a critical limitation. It cannot deliver Orion to low lunar orbit with sufficient propellant for a return journey, a capability crucial for lunar missions akin to the Apollo program. In response, NASA proposes the construction of a new space station in high lunar orbit, dubbed the Gateway, to serve as a waypoint for Orion. However, this plan introduces a convoluted set of challenges. Traveling from the moon to the high gateway orbit and back necessitates a lander with double the propellant required for a journey from the low Earth orbit. Described as a Rube Goldbergian plan, this approach not only incurs substantial costs but also introduces delays to the Artemis program's schedule undermining its efficiency and effectiveness. 
but is Crew Dragon capable of replacing Orion? Despite weighing only 20% more than the Apollo capsule, it boasts a 50% increase in internal space, rendering it more than adequately spacious for its intended purposes. What's particularly advantageous is the ability to circumvent the waiting time and costs associated with the SLS. The already operational Falcon Heavy launcher from SpaceX is fully capable of transporting Crew Dragon to low lunar orbit, complete with a fully fueled return stage, rendering the Gateway Station unnecessary. While the landing process would still involve a two-rocket scenario, one for delivering Crew Dragon to lunar orbit and another for the lander, it proves significantly more cost-effective and expeditious. This approach would require two Falcon Heavy rockets in contrast with the two SLS boosters, each of which incurs tenfold higher costs. Instead of spending over $3.5 billion annually on the development costs for Orion and the Space Launch System, NASA could purchase several Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon Heavy rockets to launch them. The cost disparities between NASA's existing programs and commercially driven alternatives are remarkable. A comprehensive analysis by the Planetary Society reveals that NASA has committed a staggering $23.7 billion to the development of the Orion spacecraft, intended for deep space missions, hosting up to four astronauts for a duration of 21 days. In sharp contrast, the commercial crew program's investment in Crew Dragon amounted to a mere $1.7 billion, a fraction of the cost, with the added benefit of Crew Dragon having successfully proven its capabilities. Furthermore, NASA's expenditure on the SLS always reaches an enormous figure. It has to bear costs of at least $2 billion for each launch once it becomes operational. In stark contrast, SpaceX independently financed the entire development of the Falcon Heavy launcher. A lunar launch using SpaceX's Falcon Heavy is estimated to cost NASA between $150 and $200 million representing a remarkably cost-effective alternative compared to the substantial investments associated with the government-funded SLS program. These figures underscore the economic efficiency and financial prudence demonstrated by commercial entities in the realm of space exploration. But why doesn't NASA use Crew Dragon to reach the moon sooner? The first reason is that they cannot easily abandon a project with such lucrative funding. Honestly, the SLS program's goals aren't inherently aligned with space exploration, lunar landings, heavy lift capabilities, or other aspects of space travel. Instead, SLS seems to function as a mechanism primarily focused on channeling significant funding into various congressional districts. The program appears designed to incentivize delays and cost overruns. Its exclusion could mean the financial inflow comes to a halt. On the other hand, according to a former NASA administrator in 2020, the proposal to use Dragon instead of Orion for the moon program was completely rejected. I think it's important to note that Crew Dragon was specifically designed for low Earth orbit and to send it to the moon would require a ton of modifications, he said. I'm not saying you couldn't modify it, but if you modified it, it'd look a lot like Orion. But that seems to be just an excuse for them to keep the expensive SLS and Orion program. Garrett Reisman, a former NASA astronaut and consultant, noted that traveling beyond the low Earth orbit would therefore require some substantial but feasible changes to the spacecraft. Dragon's communications system works through GPS, so it would need a new communications and navigation system. In terms of radiation, he said, addressing this for astronauts is relatively straightforward, but hardening electronics would require some work. The heat shield could be made capable of returning from the moon relatively easily, Reisman said. Additional consumables for a longer journey would take up interior volume. Another consideration is that Falcon Heavy is not rated for human launches meaning it does not include various safety factors that would increase its reliability. However, NASA could solve that problem by launching a Dragon separately on a Falcon 9 and a propulsion module on another Falcon 9. They could then dock, a procedure NASA perfected during the Gemini program more than half a century ago, and proceed to the moon. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.